Okay, so this video is as much about Kevin Logan as it is about Lacey Green. Lacey Green made a video the other day on gender. I watched the video, I thought it was okay. There was a couple of bits I wanted to comment on. I'll make, I'll, I'll tack one of those comments on to the end of this video, but I plan to record a different video today. And then I saw Kevin Logan's response yesterday. And I have to say, it was one of the, it was one of the, the worst examples of quote mining I think I've ever seen in all my time on YouTube. It's one of the, probably one of the most egregious things to happen to mining in the United Kingdom since Arthur Scargill left office. I tell you what I'll do, just on the off chance you haven't seen Lacey Green's video on gender, let me play you the relevant part. I'll speed it up a little bit, right, so you don't have to sit through the whole thing. And then I'll show you what Kevin did to it. And I think that this is one of the problems in this conversation is that the same word is being used to refer to like a million things. Gender sometimes refers to sex. How many genders? Basically two. Gender sometimes refers to society's gender roles. How many? Basically two. Gender sometimes refers to someone's outward gender expression. How many? Potentially infinite. Gender sometimes refers to individual gender identities. How many? Potentially infinite. And gender sometimes refers to labels and pronouns. It's language. How many? Again, potentially infinite. Okay, so if you hadn't watched that before, what she's effectively saying is that some of our conversations around gender are being confounded because people are referring to different things. And she gives two examples first off the bat where people use the word gender to refer to something which is binary. And then she gives three more examples where people are using gender to refer to things in such a way that gender is not binary, that effectively it fills out, I suppose you could say, it's more of an analogue and it's filling out a kind of colour space in which there's potentially kind of infinite number of variations. She then goes on to make the case after that as to why she favours the latter rather than the former and then sums it up just in case there's any fucking ambiguity about that whatsoever she then sums it up with this sentence and i think we have to look at all all of that that is in a nutshell why i think there is more to gender than just biology you see i don't think there's any way that she could make that any fucking clearer this idea that gender is akin to biological sex and therefore is a binary she's made it abundantly clear that that is not her position unless you're like high on lsd or sm unless you're smashed out your face on cheap fucking cider that you've stolen off the tramp that lives down the street <laughs> I don't know how you could watch her video and walk away from it drawing any other conclusion that the gender equals binary position is not the position that she holds, is not the position that she is trying to sell to the people that are watching her video. But this was the response that Kevin Logan made. Put your fucking mining helmets on because this is a fucking corker. There are basically two genders. She's parroting the same fucking shit that these fucking assholes want to hear. Ah, fucking hell. I don't really think I need to say anything about that. I mean, that is just so fucking cringing, the obvious. She outlines five things, five points, five positions that other people hold. Kevin just shows the first two and then pretends. Let's play, let's pretend that those are actually her position. Look, Kev, right, I'm, I, I could chastise you for this, couldn't I say? How fucking cynical, how manipulative, but I'm not going to do that because that would assume on my part that you're trying to act, you, that you want to be a decent actor in this game, that you don't want to misrepresent people. I, I criticised you for this on Twitter. 
And your responses said to me, I don't think I've done anything wrong here. You had comment after comment after comment after comment after comment under your video. Not just from the kind of people that would always slag you off, but from people who I would not expect to always slag you off, saying, this is a bit over the top, Kev. This is such an obvious quote, mine. So I'm going to assume that you want to, you don't see, you don't see a problem with this. Maybe you're one of these people that doesn't see bad tactics, you just see bad targets or what have you. But I've got to say, even if you're looking to quote mine and misrepresent people, let me just give you a tip, Kev. Let me just give you a little tip, which is if you're going to quote mine somebody, you need to pick your targets a little bit more carefully. You've got about four or 5,000 subscribers. She has about 1.5 million, Kevin. And she exists in a sphere on YouTube that your subscribers are really, really interested in. She, at the moment, is saturated. She's marinated in a kind of one of these YouTube bullshit scandals that means that everybody is waiting to see her latest video. So the problem that you have is, when you try and do this quote mine, is that the vast majority of people who watched your video had already seen her fucking video. That is not a scenario that is conducive to a successful quote mine, Kev, right? I mean, if you really want to pull off such a such a such an outlandish quote mine, you need to pick something that your audience will not have seen and just rely on the typical YouTube viewers' laziness that they don't bother going to check out the original. For fuck's sake, don't pick something that they will have all already watched. Jesus fucking Christ. Um, and another thing, Kevin, with regard to feminism, I've just got, before I leave Kev alone, right, I've just got to pick up on this. Why are you still pretending to be a feminist? I mean, you're fucking not, in any realistic sense whatsoever. No, I mean, you've done nothing but pander to these fucking scumbags now for, what, a couple of months or whatever? And given your, the answers you've given on Twitter and your Ask FM and all of that, you're not a fucking feminist anymore. Stop lying. You know, I think you're playing a very cynical fucking game here, Kevin. And it's, it's not you that's going to get shot in the foot. It's feminism. You're putting me in a really difficult position here, Kevin. A, because I end up now having to stick up for feminism when I'm not a feminist. And B, because it should be you. It should be you. As the, as the online fucking feminist advocate that's sticking up for feminism. Not you that's smashing feminism in the fucking face. But that is exactly what you're doing. Because how many times do I hear feminists say that feminism is about equality for women? And at base, that is all that it's about, is equality for women. And if you believe in equality for women... Right, if you truly genuine, I don't mean you just mouth it, you believe equality for women, then you're a feminist. Ergo, if you label yourself an anti-feminist or not a feminist, that means you don't believe in equality for women. And now you're saying that Lacey Green isn't a fucking feminist. So unless you've got something that shows that Lacey Green no longer believes in equality for women, right, then, then this is just hypocritical bullshit. On your part. You're speaking with a fucking forked tongue here. And what you're doing is you're just playing into the hands of all those people who cynically and probably quite reasonably say call bullshit when what you say is that all feminism is about is equality for women. Because clearly as far as people like you're concerned, right, this is just fucking snake oil salesmanship as far as you're concerned. That's the bit to get people through the front door. But actually there really is this fucking hundred point plan. And even if you just get a little sniff that somebody like Lacey Green might not be on, but maybe she's just not quite as intersectional as I require her to be. Despite the fact it was only about five days she was tweeting in defence of putting a black and brown fucking stripe on the, on the LGBT pride flag to show that people of colour can be gay and lesbian too. Apparently she's not intersectional enough or she's not quite on board 
intersectional enough or she's not quite on board enough with trans issues because she's prepared to explore the different ways that people use the word gender. Fucking, can you not see the damage that you're doing to your own fucking arguments here? This can be thrown back in your face and in the face of feminism for as long as you are on YouTube when you say stuff like this because if Lacey Green isn't a fucking feminist then you cannot be being genuine when you say all that feminism is about is equality is believing genuinely in equality for women that's all that I wanted to say to Kev on this okay Lacey Green's video so I like I actually quite like Lacey Green's video I don't know that I got that much from it but I think that it's a valid point that she made that when people talk about gender they're talking about different things Right, and I think we all need to be aware of that. I think it's worth it, even if we still end up talking about different things. I think if we all go in open-minded to the fact that when other people are talking about gender, they may be talking about other things, that at least stops us making, I suppose you could say, axiomatic errors. Um, and not realising that's what we're doing. Thinking that our, that, that our disagreements are further up the food chain than they actually are. So I thought that it had some value. But there was one fundamental thing where I disagreed with Lacey Green. So I'm going to play you a couple of clips. The first clip is where Lacey is effectively saying that gender is just society's reaction to biological sex. And there's, it's really just a sort of arbitrary uh, cultural construct not based on biology whatsoever. Let me play you that bit. Traits from both, just like us, there are animals that transition um, between sexes. But what's not just like us, what other animals don't have, in my book, is gender. Monkeys and tigers, they might be male or female, but they aren't men or women. Gender is the way that body sex is interpreted and understood in the world, in society. The American Psychological Association defines gender as the attitudes, feelings, and behaviors that a given culture associates with a person's biological sex. And this is the definition that is you know, widely used by experts. So here's the thing, you gave this definition that it's the attitudes, feelings, and behaviors that a given culture associates with a biological sex. So it's, it's viewed from externally, it's societal expectations of a biological sex. It's nothing intrinsic and innate to the individual is not what gender is. I dispute that. I think that it's, it is those things, but I think that it is more than that. And I think the discussions that we have on gender, especially when we consider things like gender dysphoria, prove that we ex understand that it is more than that. And so when you said at the start of that clip that you don't think other animals have gender, I would ask you to reconsider that in the light of the fact that there is this biological aspect. And I know that you believe there is this biological aspect because despite giving that definition and saying what you said at this point in the video, later on in the video you said something which as far as I was concerned somewhat naysaid what you'd said earlier on where you accepted that there is a biological aspect to gender. This was what you said. However, for a lot of gender differences, the evidence overwhelmingly points to both, you know, some role of biology and of our social environment at once. So the next question then is, well, how much of our gender differences are biological versus social? You know, to what degree does each play a role? And I think that that is the interesting question. So, you know, I'm absolutely on board with what you say there, Lacey. I'm in a very, very similar position to you with regard to that. But I think that flies in the face of what you were saying earlier on in your video. Because if you take that position of earlier on in the video, that effectively it's just the way culture is reflecting on these things and the different cultural expectations of males and females, then I don't see how gender dysphoria works I don't think, I don't see why that would happen. It doesn't make any sense to me. If we had no intrinsic expectations, any intrinsic feeling of maleness or femaleness, then, I mean, one of the classic examples, for example, that people trot out, it must be the classic example of people that trot out the arbitrariness of, of gender, is this blue is for boys and pink is for girls and blah, blah, blah. If you went back a century, pink was the boy's colour, etc, 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 right? But if everything was, and I accept that that is a cultural artefact, of course it is. But if everything was just as simple as that, then 
then then if you were brought up with ambiguous genitalia and actually actually you were male it turns out you were male and you had a male facing brain let's say and you were brought up with people saying pink is your color pink is your color pink is your color i don't see why that would make you suicidal right i don't think how that how you would feel that there's something fundamentally wrong that these expectations are not matching up with your brain. If everything was as arbitrary as that, there must surely be something more intrinsic to that within the human condition. And I think that most trans people that I've heard accept that, and a lot of feminists actually accept that, as well as the vast majority of people who are not feminists. They accept this idea that there is some intrinsic differences there. And one of the ways in which this is often talked about is that perhaps it's the development, the genetic development and the epigenetic development means that we end up, you can end up with a male body, but effectively a female facing brain or vice versa. It could be hormones in the womb at some specific point where it is very critical for your cognitive development. The hormonal things are slightly askew and you end up with a brain that effectively isn't matching your body. And that can result in gender dysphoria. And I think most of us accept that, but I don't see how that would be a thing right if it's all just culture if it's just just the cultural expectations and it's all just absolutely arbitrary there's nothing intrinsic to the individual there's nothing innate to the individual but if we accept that right this is the bit that i would like you to reflect upon if you watch this video lacy how can you make the point that other mammals don't have gender after all surely other mammals as well as having physi being physiologically male or female, also have a male or female facing brain, and that might not exactly make up. I mean, I suppose if I wanted to make the case, if I wanted to make it easy on myself, I'd go to all the great apes because they have that cultural layer as well. But I think you can go a lot further than that. I could pick on something like elephant seals. Right, which is a great example, partly because physiologically they are so massively dimorphic male and female elephant seals, but also because it's pretty obvious in their behaviour that their behaviour is dimorphic, that male elephant seals are incredibly aggressive. Their attitude, their persona is very, very different. They will fight literally to the death to try and be the bull on a particular area of beach and get their mating rights. And their behaviours are very, very different. Their drives, their motives, their intrinsic innate character is very, very different from female elephant seals. What can you give me? What can you give me that disproves, that ne negates any possibility that an elephant seal could be born with a male body? right, that is effectively a male elephant seal, but something has happened in the embryological development of that ele ele male elephant seal that means it effectively has a female facing brain, that it is, has a female attitude, that it regards itself to all intents and purposes as a female elephant seal. Is that not, is this what we're talking about here? Is this not the very bedrock of what people are talking about when they're talking about gender dysphoria or the causes of gender gender dysphoria. I mean, I admit, I know that dysphoria means distress, and, and obviously elephant seals do not bemoan their condition the same way humans do, right? So I'm not saying they're suffering from dysphoria, but in terms of what we're talking about, the substance of the issue, how is this any different? And so it seems perfectly reasonable for me, if we're defining gender in terms of what we need to define it as, in terms of taking account of transgender people, and the transgender condition and the things that they suffer from both in terms of, of the way that they can be born with their gender identity not matching up to their body but also in terms of genital ambiguity and the wrong decision being made if we're going to take account of those things as real things I don't see how you cannot say that that same difference in, in brain attitude and in, in, if you like, the sex of the brain can differ from the sex of the body, at least in other mammals, at least in other mammals. If you do watch this video, Lacey, I'd really be interested to know what your thoughts are on that. If you're not Lacey Green, and I know that most of you are not, let Lacey Neat Green know about this, because I'd quite be interested to know what Lacey thinks about this. Okay, that's it. Finished. Run over. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.